Hey everyone, I'm Katie. And I'm Jesse. Welcome to our course on data structures and algorithms in Swift. If you want to learn how to build your own data structures or implement custom algorithms, this course can help you get started. We'll also help you build up your skills and tackle some more advanced topics as well. We structured this course with two goals in mind. First, we intend to give you an overview of foundational data structures and algorithms that will help prepare you to continue exploring more on your own. Second, we chose examples that would build on one another throughout the course in order to prepare you for some more advanced data structures and algorithms at the end. In part one, we'll cover two fundamental data structures, stacks and queues. Our implementations will help you learn how to leverage existing Swift data structures to build your own custom types. We'll also introduce you to an assortment of basic sorting algorithms. Part two will focus on a different kind of data structure, the tree. Trees are particularly useful for storing data in a hierarchical structure. We'll take you from understanding basic tree structures to implementing special types of trees like heaps and priority queues. Finally, part three will build on everything covered in the first two parts. In this final part of the course, we'll dig into some complex topics like graphs and two famous pathfinding algorithms. The concepts covered in this course are language agnostic, but we'll be implementing everything in Swift. We recommend you have a strong grasp of the Swift language or a willingness to learn new concepts as you go before starting the course. We have some courses on Swift to help you get up to speed. The book Swift Apprentice is also a great choice, especially if you really want to dig into advanced Swift topics. We'll also be writing unit tests in this course to test out our data structures and algorithms. Testing is not the focus of this course, and you won't need prior experience to follow along. However, if you're interested, we do have a course that covers testing in iOS. Before we get into it, there's some common terminology and concepts you should know. Throughout the course, we'll refer to two measures of complexity in regards to algorithms, time complexity and space complexity. Time complexity is a measure of the time required to run an algorithm as the input size increases. Programmers use a notation known as big O notation to represent different magnitudes of time complexity. The same notation can be used to measure space complexity, which is a measure of the memory needed for an algorithm to run. Let's explore some different magnitudes of complexity in terms of time. A constant time algorithm is one that has the same running time regardless of the size of the input. So for this function, the size of the names array has no impact on how long it takes to run. Regardless of how many names there are, it only checks the first element of the array. The big O notation for constant time is big O of 1. What about a function like this that prints out each name in a string array? As the input array increases in size, the number of iterations that the for loop makes is increased by the same amount. This is an example of a linear time operation. With linear time, as the amount of data increases, the running time increases by the same amount. The big O notation for linear time is big O of n. Quadratic time complexity refers to an algorithm that takes time proportional to the square of the input size. This function prints out all of the names in the array for every name in the array. So if you have 10 names, it will print out all 10 names 10 times. That's 100 print statements. You can see how an algorithm with this time complexity could quickly run out of control as the data size increases. The big O notation for this one is big O of n squared, and it's often just referred to as n squared. In the previous examples, every item in an array was inspected by the functions, but sometimes only a subset of the input needs to be inspected. Cases like that can give you logarithmic time. Binary search, which we'll cover in part two, is an algorithm with logarithmic complexity. It works by essentially cutting the input to search in half in each iteration. The big O notation for logarithmic time complexity is big O of log n. The final type of time complexity you'll see in this course is quasilinear time. This one performs worse than linear time, but significantly better than quadratic time. The big O notation for this one is big O of n log n. There are many other time complexities, but these are the most common. It is important to note that time complexity is just a high level overview of performance. So two algorithms can have the same time complexity, but one may still perform much faster than the other. You should also remember that time complexity becomes more important the larger your data set is. So for small data sets, time complexity may not be a helpful measure of speed. One last thing before we move on. This course is based on the book Data Structures and Algorithms in Swift by Kelvin Lau and Vincent Ngo. We'd like to thank the entire book team for putting together such an amazing resource. Now, if you're ready to get started, meet us in the next episode where we'll talk about some data structures you might already know.
Getting started with algorithms can be a bit tricky, but don't worry, we've got you covered. We have lots more where this video is coming from. So keep on watching, and if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below.